Good evening, everyone. For those who joined us, welcome to our ESSEC Alumni Webinar. For those who don't know me, my name is Ian Ong, and I'm the Alumni Relations Manager for ESSEC Asia Pacific. I'm very happy today to introduce our alumni speaker, Loic Benata, who is the Vice President Asia Pacific for Bangsa International. He will be speaking to us on a very exciting and interesting topic tonight, which is fighting COVID-19 with an agile supply chain. Should you have any questions they'd like to ask the speaker, please ask them via the chat group that we have. We will try to answer them during the Q&A session. And without further ado, I shall now pass the mic over to Loic. Hello, everybody. Very honored to have this chance to be uh, among you, uh, among you guys. Uh, thank you, Jan, for this opportunity. So I have to say that uh, this hour will be a relaxed hour, and I've not had a relaxed hour like this since uh, maybe uh, the last uh, since uh, beginning of March. Why? Because the times of uh, supply chain have been has been uh, really crazy. Um, so we are a freight forwarding company, it means that we move freight from one point to another in the world. And uh, it's a 60 year old company. And I can tell you in 60 years, nobody has seen such changes. And in the last two months or month and a half, all that we thought that we knew, we had to change it. So this is why I use the word agile because it has been such a challenge that we had to change both our way of thinking and our way to support our clients all over the world. So as you, okay, this is a general information. So since November, 2019, you have had the, break, uh, the, the breakout of the, uh, of the disease uh, with the first cases in Wuhan. Those are the cases that happened, that were located in China, according to Chinese data in January 22nd, 2020. This is in February, this is in March, and this is in April. Why I'm, I'm showing you this is just to show you that this evolution of disease of the disease will match with a global, unforeseen, huge demand for medical products worldwide. Each country that is affected starts to import masks and other medical products. Normally in supply chain, you have to anticipate your needs. Nobody has done it or nobody has done it properly. Maybe one country has done it well since February is Israel. And I can see, uh, and uh, because they have bought all the machines and all the stocks already in February when they saw that uh, the situation could go wrong. But most of the other countries like the US, like Europe and other countries has not done it properly. I don't talk about Singapore or Hong Kong, for instance, that are countries that experience the SRAS uh, situation and that are experienced on this business. So how to handle such big demands of medical products? Because we don't need it in two months. We don't need it in one month. We need it now. And if it's already arrived and cleared and delivered to the final user, it's great. So what products are we talking about? First, all the personal protection with face mask, as you may know, you have different kinds, some that are considered as medical for hospitals, I would say, and some that are just protective for civilians like us. After you have the, eye, the goggles to protect the eyes, uh, the visors, uh, the, the gloves or the gowns or these kind of things to protect the people that are taking care of uh, COVID-19 uh, patients. And of course, COVID-19 test kits that are, I'm sure you have heard a lot of stories, sometimes working, sometimes not. And the famous ventilators that are used for ICU in the hospital for the serious cases of, uh, of uh, COVID-19. Um, in the supply chain, you have, I will say, there are four steps that are important. The first one is the sourcing where to buy, how to buy goods in the factories in China. So this is not my job, but I can tell you that this is such a challenge, but of course a lot of stories came to me and I've been facing a lot of suppliers of uh, those products. So first, why China is such in the center of the attention? Easy, China 
is the first producer of masks. There's no doubt, uh, it has been always the case. And since uh, the outbreak in China uh, in January and February, China has moved all its own industry into mass producing. So for instance, automotive factories became producers of masks. Uh, all the suppliers of iPhone, of Apple, for instance, Foxconn, one of the big ones, is now switch 30% of its production to mask. So those are just ideal facts. But that means that those big guys can become big producers. So now the production on daily basis is 110 million. I think it's from March because I think it's now reached 140 million pieces a day of mask. China, as I said, big factories, they have very nice uh, factories, very big apparel of production. So they are able to switch, they, are, they have been able and very agile to move their production of other products that of course decreased with the crisis in the world because people are not consuming anymore uh, general goods like clothes. Remember the last time you bought clothes for Europeans, it was three months ago. So people that were producing clothes, they have the machines. So they are doing masks. So China has been, has been very agile to do it. So the sourcing strategy has to be to find the right products because we give, we can tell you there is a hundred kinds of masks. The right price, because people can tell you uh, uh, for the simple face mask, uh, 50 cents USD or 10 cents USD or $1. Like I heard, I, I, I heard some prices more than over $1 during the China crisis, means China was buying more than $1 a mask, the face mask to overseas, to give you an idea. And of course, the demand is now, so you need to have the cargo at the right time. So how to find those products? I want to give you the, to give you the first challenge. As I said, all the producers of masks, traditional ones, they are very happy. But all the non-traditional ones have become mass producers from the big automotive factories, you saw the pictures, to the shitty one. Sorry for the word, but like people doing in their, uh, in their uh, uh, garage and making masks, because anyway, one mask is uh, ten, five RMB, so let's do a one million mask by hand, and whatever the, the, the standards and the cleanliness and the, the hygiene, we don't care, people want masks, we give them masks. So Chinese people have answered the need to have masks. But what is the quality that we are buying? So I will give you some ideas. I will give you a conversation I had with a supplier. A company that was in France asked me to check if the supplier was producing proper masks for hospitals in France because the final destination of the goods were hospital. So I had this conversation. I called, I called the supplier and I said, okay, those goods, is it good quality? Yes, 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 it's very good quality. So you are sure about it's clean and everything? Yes, 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 yes. You have all the certificates? Yes, 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 yes. I make it a little bit simpler. And they say, okay, so those masks you would use with yourself? He say, yes, yes, of course I would use. But you know, it's going to a hospital in France. You are sure it's, it's okay? Yes, of course, it's okay, it's okay, no problem. Very good quality, very good quality. Okay, so I ask a question, say this mask, you would sell it to a hospital in China? Oh no, oh no, never, I would never sell this. Say why? Oh, because not good quality for a uh, for hospital. So that's the idea. People know that they are not selling good products, but as soon as it's for overseas, it's just business. So let's do business. People ask me mask, I give them mask. Of course, I tell them it's very good because I want to have a high price, but that's the idea. To give you an idea, today a mask a face mask, if you buy big quantities, is about 20 US dollar cent. Uh, FFP2 mask, the one like duck, they are about 1.3, 1.4 dollars when you buy a big quantities. But to give you an idea, when it was before the outbreak of the virus, the face mask was maybe two or three cents. So the price is increased by 10. So anybody can do mask and it's very good business. So that's the idea, how to find the right quality of the product, how to find the product that is for the right use. 
after, as I mentioned, the right price, yes, you have the, you have the very high price. There's a market buying both masks at very high price. But most important, this business is no credit. You pay, you have. You don't pay, you will have, you, you, there is no, nothing is started in terms of production. So now it's payment before starting of production. If you want to have a stock, you pay the stock. And if you have a production, I would advise you to pay it and get it as soon as possible. Why? Maybe you heard some stories of a, a plane, a charter plane that landed in France with half of the mask that, were plan that was planned. US buyers bought half of the plane and sent those masks to US instead. They just outbid. They just increased the price by 50% and the factories delivered to them why the French buyer had bought, had bought the, the mask before. So the one that pays the highest is the one that has a priority on the product. So today there's a war on who can get the stock. When I said the right factory, as I mentioned, you have to make sure that you deal either with somebody that knows the product or knows the factory where he's buying. I have seen schemes of seven intermediaries between the factory and the final buyer, seven. So I can tell you how to check the production, how to check the documents. It's a really an issue. And it comes to the last topic, which will be uh, further developed later, is how to make sure that you have the right products with the right certificates. Okay, right certificates for the packaging to be able to be exported from China and to be imported in the country of destination. And that is a challenge. As I mentioned, everybody has become a producer. Nobody knows how it works. All the middlemen that were doing textile, uh, automotive, uh, food, they became mask importers. Anybody that has done once in his life import from China thinks he can handle a production, a control of quality in China for masks. But there's a challenge. The challenge is this. We come with very bad quality of masks. You have uh, maybe uh, last week, uh, Canada has uh, received in a, uh, maybe 40 million masks uh, to, in a hospital and they were all wrong. A lot of masks were all problematic and it comes to the, wrong, to, the, to the hospital. So you can see the consequences of not having the mask. This is a kind of place where you can produce. You can see the production, okay? Those machines to make masks, to give you an idea, before the crisis, it was maybe $5,000. Today is more than $120,000 for a machine and people are still buying. So after, all those troubles on how to buy. Let's say you have bought the goods. Now you think it's done. Okay, I bought the goods. I talked to the, to the trading companies. Yeah, I bought the goods in China. Now you just need to send them to, to the country of destination. But actually, it's only 20% of the problem. Why? Because you need to export the goods from China. As I mentioned, you saw all the problems of quality. And you know that in China, the concept of face is very important. So when a country says the masks sent by China are very bad quality for Chinese people, it's very important to keep face. So they want to have a lot more control on the export. But the problem of a lot of control on the export leads to dramas. There are so many, so many controls that nothing leaves anymore. There's a big congestion. For instance, I take an example, some charter flights Fly, flew empty because the mask could not pass the customs in China because it took too much time. In China, in the last three weeks, they have changed three times the rule for export. Three times. From day to another. I give you an example of this weekend. Saturday night, maybe midnight, customs, without any advice, published a new rule of customs. It was 25th of April. The new rule of customs starts from 26th. So you don't have time to adapt. You don't have time to change the packaging or the documents. No, you need to comply immediately. 
the rule of 17 of April, even the customs officers didn't know about it. We asked them how to do, they were not able to answer. We are going to ask how to do. So in China, we have to, when you solve the problem, first you pass the law and after you understand it and after you apply it. But how can you imagine billions of masks ready to depart, but cannot depart because of customs blocking, the customs are blocking. And we don't know why. We don't know how to do. Please tell us how to do, we will do. Please wait for a moment. Please wait, we will inform you. But it, it's written like this, we should do the documents or not? Yes, you should do, but how to do the document? Uh, we are going to do the document and if it's wrong, we will tell you. Just to give you the concept, so that's the idea. So nobody has the right information and we have to digest it and talk a lot and to see by experience how, it's, how the rules have, have changed. What is the consequence of all this? 95% of the non-medical mask, means not for medical use, are inspected by the Chinese customs. What's happening? A big congestion in the customs. It takes two to three days to clear a, to clear a shipment. And with the inspection rates, you have a lot of shipments that do not, are not cleared within a week. You remember I was telling you, we need the cargo yesterday. We need the mask at the destination yesterday. But just to clear cargo, sometimes you need more than a week. I give you another, another consequence. This video, small video, is the video of all the trucks in line to access the airport. Why? Because of the high inspection rate, warehouses are full of cargo waiting to be cleared. Airports are full, the terminals are full of cargo under inspection. So you have huge lanes like this. This is in Shanghai Pudong Airport of trucks waiting to arrive into the terminal or to the warehouse. And this is an idea of the warehouse where it's totally full and you see all the cartons that are open because the customs officers are coming to inspect the goods. But there is not 10 times more inspect, uh, uh, customs officers compared to before. It's the same number. So this is a congestion consequence. So as I mentioned, there is we, you can only start the clearance for a cargo three days before departure, but it takes two or three days to clear cargo. And you can see that even after you clear the cargo, you need to access the airport with a long queue that you have seen. Just to give you an idea of the mess, all the airports in China are in this mess, and this is the only way today to ship the cargo is by air freight, because cargo is needed urgently. So this is a mess we have to face and to organize. And people tell us, yes, but you told us that you can clear in one day. I say, yes, it was before the law of 17 of April. Yes, but you told us, you didn't tell us you need this document, but this is from the law of 25th of April. And my cargo has been inspected, but it's not cleared yet. Yes, and it has missed the departure. Yes, we know, but the cargo is still in the queue to the airport. So that gives you the idea of the mess and all the consequences on the whole supply chain from purchasing until destination. Because at destination, they only make new orders when they receive it. And at origin, they only pay the new orders when they receive the money. So it means there's a big, I would say, call it jet lag of orders that is delaying the production and the goods to ship, it, to ship them. The third step, once you have cleared the cargo, luckily, you have to ship the goods. So, as I mentioned, at origin, the lead times have increased, the prices of the product has increased, the price of the air freight you will see has increased a lot, and the demand is asking for the goods before yesterday. So how to do? To give you an idea, you can have the vision of the whole flights, air traffic in 2019, and on the bottom right, you have just for France. This is last year. This is today. And today, every all the masks and medical products are flying. How to do? What is this mess? There is no passenger flights anymore, and only 
cargo freighters can take the cargo. All the flights are grounded. How to do? This is just to give you an idea, the scheduled flight <coughs> for each country. We talk about 75% to 90% decrease. How to do? First, use cargo freighters that who are already on the market, but as you can imagine, everybody is doing it. So there's a huge demand. I give you an idea. A plane from China to Europe before was about three to four hundred thousand US dollars, three hundred thousand dollars, let's say. Today, a full charter is over one point two million dollars. And if you want a charter and you pay now, you have it in two weeks or three weeks. It depends. Another idea that the airlines got is this. It's the inside of a passenger plane. So they put in the belly and on top of the, of the passenger seats, you can see also the cartons. That's how they try to optimize the space because now the space is gold. Space is gold because just to give you an idea, in terms of price, one kilo to Europe used to be $2. Today is 14 a kilo. One kilo to the US was $3. Now it's about 20 US dollars per kilo. But, and people are paying. They don't have choice and they are paying because they calculate per mask. I ship 1 million mask, I add 10 cents, it's okay. They don't realize, or of course they realize, but they don't realize that the price we are paying for logistics is crazy. Let's say you succeeded to send the cargo. What about destination? How to clear the cargo? And this is the most important slide in my uh, presentation because you will understand a lot of topics that are happening. For instance, in Singapore, in France, in US. Do you want to have everybody with mask now? Or do you want to have people with mask very quickly, but with the right mask that is actually protecting you? So do you want three hamburgers or a nice salad? It's more expensive to have a salad. It's less volume because you focus on quality. Or you want to have as many masks as possible. You don't care what kind of mask, but you need the mask. So this is a big dilemma. And it's a dilemma for a lot of countries. Uh, every country have, has, has wondered this question. So if you take Africa and the US, you want to ship a non-medical mask to the US. It's very easy. You just need packing this invoice. Africa, no, no document, bring the mask, whatever you have. And I take also the case in Europe that I know well because our company is French. France and Germany, headache to import the mask into Europe. It's a big headache. Conclusion, there is two to three days custom clearance delay at destination and not even guarantee of being cleared to clear cargo and deliver it to the customer. When before it was taking one hour. In the US is one click. Five minutes later, you can take your cargo if not expected. In France, people are overwhelmed. Nobody knows what is a mask, what they are checking. And at the end of the day, we have more than three days, four days average to clear cargo. They are changing the rules. The customs officers, they tell you one week, it's going to be okay. The week after, it's not anymore, but the cargo has flown in the middle with the right with the documents they ask. So this is a big challenge. And to give you an idea, this challenge is still ongoing. There are millions of masks in France ready to be delivered, but not yet delivered. How to make it work? I don't know if uh, in the audience there are people doing this kind of mask business, because as I said, anybody can do it. Now, can he succeed to buy the right mask and clear it to destination is another story. But clearly the supply chain challenges, all that you had in mind about supply chain, anticipation, negotiation, uh, comparison of prices, uh, uh, making sure that everything is fit. One day I have to depart, it has to be arrived on the next day, it's going to be delivered the second day. No, forget it, it's not working anymore. You cannot bargain anymore for the prices, almost nothing. You have to pick up the cargo as soon as possible because people can buy the goods for maybe 20% higher and then the guy refunds you the money if you're lucky, but you lost the mask. You have to anticipate all the, product, all the topics of custom clearance. 
But I have to tell you, if the law is changing every day, how to do it? And last but not least, for airflake part, which is my part, our part, the pe I see the difference of the lead time between people that have 10 days in advance forecast of the production and people that take, call me now and say, tomorrow I have 1 million masks to ship. Because the people that call me now, the 1 million masks to ship, they can only be part in maybe a week if they are lucky. So that is a big challenge and how we try to adapt and offer solutions. So as I said, how to switch to the crisis mode. Three moves that we have done as Bansa. So we are medium-sized company for freight forwarding. We have been in China for more than 15 years. And what we have done is that we have made a chartering program from China to India, France, Italy, US, Brazil. And now we are doing dealing with some freighters to Africa and uh, some freighters uh, to Middle East. So the demand is huge, the demand is global, but we have to provide clear solutions. Second, our business is not only air freight. We do also sea freight means containers, rail freight means train. But how to make everybody work on air freight? Because today, all the other ways of shipping do not work anymore, or almost nothing. Then you have to adapt all the team. And I can tell you, even the receptionist is preparing all the express shipments from China for our customers. Also, we are doing a lot of donations to hospitals worldwide. So we, she's preparing every day orders to ship and even the receptionist is involved. This is gold to make sure that we have the right information from the customs. So we have people that are talking every day in each country about the customs, new guidance. It is very, very important. This is what we have achieved in the last three weeks. So I can tell you it's very hard work. You can see the headache of each shipment making sure that we have the cargo, making sure that we can clear the cargo at origin, making sure that we can ship the cargo, making sure that we can clear our destination. And still, this is what we have reached with 200 million masks. And this week it will be maybe 300 million because we have a lot of charters in place and 1 million kilo, that's 1,000 tons of other equipment because I talked a lot of masks, but you have gloves, gowns and other products. And today, we have done 40 countries and maybe we can reach 50 or 60 countries where we will deliver. We are a medium sized company. We are 600 people in the world, but this is what the Chinese team has been able to achieve. And I can tell you each shipment, there is a feeling. People are very hardworking, but that's something that is different from before. It's the first time in our job, maybe in our lives, that we can feel we can make the difference to save lives. If you find a solution for one million masks to arrive two or three days before, to be clear two or three days before, it means people will get the mask two or three days before. So for sure, those people should have been affected, infected by the COVID-19, big chance if they didn't have those masks. So every day, the energy that we have is that we, are, we can make a difference to save lives worldwide. And that's why the team is uh, super cooperating, working weekends, overnight and everything, because they know how important this supply chain uh, 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 topic and challenges is important to make the world heal from this disease. Voilà. If you want to know the next step for the supply chain is this one. Today you manage everything in emergency. We need now the mask because people cannot go out if they don't have mask. But you understand with, that with COVID-19, clearly for the next year or two years until we have vaccination, uh, good testing, uh, and it disappears, people will need to wear masks every day in all the public places. And because of this, all those medical products will be necessary for everybody. And because of this, we are going to move to emergency shipment to more economical solutions, more structural organization in the supply chain. But this move, I can give you an, uh, something clear. Today, I received my first demand after two months of crisis for a container of masks. So today is the first demand. 
please tell me how much it costs to send by sea a container of mask. And when I said the price, I said, but this is uh, 10 kilos or 20 kilos of cost almost only. Yes, I said, yes, but this is a difference. The shipping lines have empty vessels and the price is very cheap compared to airlines that are totally full and people will tell them, if tomorrow you say $30 a kilo, people will pay $30 a kilo. Today is 20 to the US, but tomorrow it will be 30 for sure. People will pay. So the whole supply chain will evolve in a different way, but how long it will take? I think we have this big crisis at least for a month or two, because each country starts the crisis later. Europe started a month and a half ago. US started three weeks ago. So the demand of the US increased a lot on top of the European. And now European is getting the enough mask, but US is still not producing enough. And then comes South America. So it's a big dynamic. And from our perspective, we can see where the disease is being affected. So that's the challenge, how to adapt also to the geography of the disease for the supply chain. That would be my conclusion. Yeah, your turn. Thank you, Louis, for the presentation. Uh, we actually have some questions during this Q&A question from our participants. I'll start off with the first one. Hi all, regarding the lack of masks, why the other countries were not as agile as China was? Is it really so complicated producing the mask? First of all, you have to know that when China got the disease, they were short of masks and they have bought all over the world, all the stocks of masks that were available at gold price. So for the countries that did not put an export ban on masks, all the stocks of all the countries went to zero because they sold or gave, donated a lot of masks to China. Then China did two things. One, import, and second, produce. So they changed all their industry to produce. If you could see in my slide, let's see if I can come back. China is producing today 110 million masks, if I remember the figures. Well, today, China per day is producing 110 million masks. In the world, you have maybe 7 billion people, let's say. Those 7 billion people are all facing the issue of the virus. Today, we know that the first thing to do to avoid the virus is to wear a mask. And you should only wear a mask if you are talking about the disposable one, some for six hours, some maximum for one day. So it means that per day, you should have one mask per person per day. So yes, today the production is not yet enough to fulfill the needs of everybody. Uh, if you are in China today, you must wear a mask to go to the office. If tomorrow they are able to do renewable and uh, uh, mask or mask that you can use for six, seven days, of course, it will be a decrease of the general demand. But today, worldwide, you need to have enough mask for everybody. So that's why you have a big congestion. So 110 million masks is not even the need for one day in the US. Well, the next question that we actually have from our participants is, you mentioned that we need to anticipate customs documentation and origins and destination and bookings as well. How is the most appropriate way to do forecasting in unprecedented events like this one? Okay, two, two things. One, uh, uh, we are helping a lot of our customers to check the documents before they buy. Okay, so we check if at the factory, do they have the documents or not? That's the first question. And most of 100% of the factories today for Europe don't have enough documents. They need to, all, all the fake CE certific, uh, CE certificates and so on, they don't have. So we need to help them to apply for them before the cargo moves to Europe. That's the first thing. Second thing, when the cargo is paid, the, the customer should tell us I have this production that will be ready in seven or 10 days. Please be careful. Please plan the space for us. Then we will book and organize the space like this. In reality, a lot of masks are available. So sometimes the people place the order and the masks are ready. 
ready to go. So this is a challenge because those masks where you buy stock, you, it's challenging to have, uh, to have the idea of uh, how to do, of how to do in terms of uh, uh, how to say, uh, how to, how to uh, ship cargo that you pay now because you need the stock now, but finally you only have space in one week. You understand? Well, it's better to have a production that starts now and ready in one week, but I will plan the flight in eight days or nine days, a lot closer to the, to the production date. So that's the challenge. People buy stocks and say, I put my money, I already paid, but now you, you lose one week to ship my cargo. I say, yes, everything is congested. Everything is full. We did not wait for you to ship. So that's the idea. Unless there is a cancellation, we cannot ship before five, seven days, or unless you pay very high price and then the airline will take your cargo as priority. Next question that we have is, how do you think this price war may impact the supply chain of medical goods in the future? Will countries like France, will you reimagine their supply chain? If you, take, if you talk about France, it's, uh, I tell you, it's a nightmare. People in France, they say, look, we are making a factory producing 10,000 masks per day. And they take video and they take uh, TV coming and look what they are doing. It's made in France. It's great. But at the end of the day, it's not fulfilling the need. You need a massive production. You need stocks because today the stock is zero. Every, all the masks that they have in France they are already used immediately in the first week. So that's the challenge. The supply chain for France, for, if I talk about masks, is that you need to ship a lot. I talk about the French government that has made some uh, uh, charters uh, to France for hospitals and public uh, for public hospitals and public administration. Most of those flights, half of it was sold on the market by the freight forwarders, the logistics company, uh, to the private companies, not to ship the public hospitals mask or equipment. So this is, this is going to be a big scandal. So you talk about supply chain. All I can tell you because I know about the French topic. It's a, one of the biggest failures I have never seen. If you talk about France, I will just give you one, one, one thing about legislation. Until end of March, any mask that was, any stock of mask in France, or any mask that was imported into France was seized by France government. So what happened? For two months, nobody exported, imported masks in France because they were, they were, the cargo was going to be seized in France. Consequence, no mask in France. All the private clinics that needed their mask, the mask were taken by the public hospitals because they didn't have enough masks. So for two months, the supply chain topic in France has been to block, to seize all the cargo. So nobody sent cargo, nobody sent masks. And it only stopped end of March, not before. That's the consequence. The next question that we have is, do you see the export slash import rules and bottlenecks being sorted out over the coming weeks? Do you foresee the market flooded in mass and there are too many rushing into the market? So uh, the line cut in the middle. Can you repeat again? I'll repeat the question again. Do you see the export slash import rules and bottlenecks being sorted out over the coming weeks? Do you foresee the market flooded with mass as there are too many rushing the market? First of all, there is a big demand and the demand is not matched by the offer yet. So I think that at least for whole May, it will be crazy like this. At least, at least. Charter programs are organized until beginning of June. That's a good feeling. For US, I have a program of charter until middle of June with three flights a week. One flight is about 10 million masks, and I'm a small player. So no, it's not yet finished, at least until end of May, beginning of June, the rush is there. Now about the rules at origin of destination to soften the rules, China, I hope, will come to mind in order to make it more simple, to control it, but smartly, because today everything is uh, controlled. So of course, uh, they control everything. So it's uh, creating a big problems. 
And uh, all I can tell you uh, for uh, the countries that are putting very tough rules like France, frankly speaking, uh, so many complaints are coming up because uh, the cargo takes three, four days to be cleared in France. While it's super urgent to have the cargo delivered and questions and uh, custom officers that are not trained and enough and they have to adapt to the new rules and the one week they tell you this is how you need to do and the week after you have to do it differently. So it's really difficult for them uh, to adapt, but it's not done in a smart way in a, lot, in a lot of countries. In a lot of countries, they opened everything, so no problem. But to give you an idea, a cargo that cannot go to Europe, factories, they say, oh, it's okay, we can ship to the US or we can ship to Africa. Means the mass that cannot go to Europe can go to the easy countries to import. So they know that they will sell the goods. Well, final question that we have in this Q&A session is, is there a way to pre-check merchandise efficiently before it arrives to the airport for customs export clearance? Uh, first of all, in the normal time, you have people can travel. So it's easy to travel. You have QC co company that goes to the warehouse and they can do. Of course, all the companies are doing, trying to do quality control, but everything, everybody is overwhelmed and the control on the movement uh, is limiting uh, there's a big limitation to the control that you can actually do. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, so at the end of the day, for the quality control, you can send somebody to the factory. You can re when we receive the cargo in our warehouse, we check that all the marking and all the documentation is with it. But we don't check the quality of the mask. We don't check if actually the air is passing or not through the mask. Normally, the test reports are, are, are here to prove it. But I can tell you, you know China, so a lot of reports are fake. A lot of reports are not for the right products, are for a different production, a different factory, and then they change it. So that's, that's the challenge. That's why China is making it more difficult at this level to, to make sure the quality is not bad. But it's hard to find, uh, to find a way to to check productions when you cannot go to the factory. <laughs> Time is pressing and uh, the limitation is pressing. Well, with that, I'd like to actually end off the Q&A session. I'd like to thank Loic for taking the time out to speak about this topic and being actively involved in the fight against COVID-19. Hopefully, these challenging times will be over soon. This concludes the end of our webinar. Thank you very much to our participants as well. And I wish you all a great evening ahead. Thank you.